The clip you just saw was not a parody. The clip you just saw was an actual woman actually upset that Birds of Prey is tanking in the box office. My name is, of course, Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater. And let's talk about why Birds of Prey is bombing. It's not doing very well. And this is interesting to me. It's very, very interesting to me because by all accounts, by all metrics, the movie should be doing a lot better uh, than it is. And unfortunately, it simply is not. So I thought we'd take a look at the problem and uh, at least what some people are saying and give give a take on it, so to speak. So coming over here to Box Office Pro, they posted an article uh, just two days ago saying, Weekend Box Office Forecast Thursday Update. Will Birds of Prey soar as 2020's first hit comic book movie? Saying here, despite increasing optimism among fans and online critics, we've updated our final weekend forecast below from 48 to 42 million for Birds of Prey and the range of 35 to 50 million in response to stalling social trends and pre-sales activity compared to similar R-rated titles with positive reviews. And to that, I have to say it's interesting because Adam Tickets was saying that it was on par, it was on track to do better than other DC films like Aquaman and Shazam. It was it was reporting higher pre-sale, pre-sale tickets, but there wasn't much there in regards to proof by just going and looking at some of the local theaters to see whether or not people were actually uh, buying those particular tickets. Uh, and it turns out they're simply just avoiding this movie, and I don't quite know why. So it says here that it remains entirely possible that walk-up business could help the film still reach higher results this weekend, but for now, our models are increasingly reliant upon them, which could be a challenging ask for an R-rated franchise film leaning heavily on the fans and adults, especially with the dual holiday frame coming up next weekend. And yeah, I mean, it's really not doing uh, very well at all, so much so that even Deadline here has an article out, How Birds of Prey Went Astray with 33 million plus opening. Now keep in mind, it is still gonna be number one at the box office this weekend, but it is not going to uh, to do as well as they were originally projecting. And that is, like I said, that's unfortunate because the movie does look like a fair amount of fun. And most people that I've talked to who have seen it have all said that it was a fair amount of fun. So they said here, Saturday AM update. In the wake of hitting highs with Wonder Woman, uh, Aquaman, the highest grossing R-rated movie of all time and the 11 time Oscar nominated and billion dollar plus grossing Joker. Keep that keep keep that in mind, by the way. Warner Brothers is hitting a pothole in the road with the Suicide Squad spinoff Birds of Prey, which made 13 million yesterday, including previews, and is on its way to 33.8 million opening stateside. That is not very good. Uh, it says, unfortunately, with the solid reviews of 82% certified fresh and four star post track and a B plus cinema score audience exits, the same as Suicide Squad and Joker aren't doing any favors here with the picks ticket sales. Rivals believe the exits are all right, but not the kind that you take over the top at the box office. Yeah. I mean, really, no, this is true. Look at this here. B cinema score over here. Uh, I mean, that's not great, but it's not it's not not terrible either. I mean, audiences seem to enjoy it. Uh, and then we've got, uh, you know, the 80% tomato meter down from 82% as reported on deadline and 84% of the audience score, but only 2,900 of those are verified. I don't know if that's going to help them out uh, or not. We really have uh, no damn idea. But going back to deadline here, uh, it says that the opening is well under the 50 to $55 million tracking projection and under the 45 million for which Warner Brothers was hoping. And even though the town loves to use tracking as the dog ate my homework excuse whenever a film collapses, they're not the ones to blame here. What's crucial for Warner Brothers and any other major motion picture studio that wants to compete and rival Disney is that when it comes to brands and IP, you need to protect them and really ensure that the proper production and launch apparatuses are in place to guaranteed uh, success. These decisions need to be thought of as long and hard during development. Don't mess around with brands at a time when Marvel can slap their name atop any superhero movie and open it to $100 million plus. DC has been trying to rebuild post Zack Snyder's Batman v Superman and Justice League upset. This isn't great for Birds of Prey, even if it miraculously muscles its way past 40 million on the weekend. Now, listen, I do want to say that that is slightly unfair to Zack Snyder. Uh, BVS, we know had a $108 million opening weekend, but was hindered in the second weekend by a 76% drop off because, because the powers that be at Warner Brothers decided that it would be a good freaking idea 
to uh, to cut 30 minutes out of the movie in order to get one extra showtime in per day. And that ended up really hurting them by really poor words of mouth. Uh, you've also got uh, the situation with Justice League and Joss Whedon having come out, come on in to basically Frankenstein his version of the movie and Zack Snyder's version of the movie together. And it just failed as well by having a hard two hour limit. This was under the leadership of Kevin Tushihara, who is no longer with the company. And they've been trying to get over that hump since then. But I would argue that Wonder Woman, Aquaman and Joker and Shazam have done well enough to move us past the couple years since BVS and Justice League. Hell, even Suicide Squad went on to go do 760 some odd million dollars worldwide when it dropped three and a half years ago. So trying to still tie it back into BVS and Justice League literally just makes no sense. And it's one of the reasons why I'm having a little bit of trouble with, with this article, but I just wanted to get that one off my chest. Now, it says here that some will argue that Birds of Prey was never meant to be uh, a film like Suicide Squad. Um, which he doesn't agree with. I would agree, actually. But I think a February opening, they're hoping for a Deadpool or um, a Black Panther opening, saying it's a brand and that's a lot of money to spend, according to finance sources, on a movie that's intended to be event film in the off season. Again, it's possible that Birds of Prey makes up its US Canada shortfall overseas, but it's not looking good. No one is expecting the movie to make any money in Asia. And since Wednesday in 78 territories, the pick has grossed around 18.1 million. Overall, it's bad, says one film finance source who has no skin in the game, which is not good. Let's be fair here. Uh, so they do go on to talk about other movies here, like Fast and the Furious movies and so on and so forth. But he goes on, it says here, as I have mentioned uh, below, Birds of Prey and Harley Quinn didn't earn the immediate right to an R rating like the Logan spinoff X-Men or Joker off Batman. Harley Quinn is beloved by young females of the animated TV show in the movie, and that entire audience is being sidelined this weekend because Birds of Prey are rating. Uh, so that basically says here that 13 to 17 year olds, despite enjoying the movie at 86%, couldn't show up at 9%. On Cinema Score, the under 18 crowd attended at 18%, giving it an A minus. Who came out to watch Birds of Prey? Why men over 25 at 33%, guys with overall repping 53% of ticket buyers, and Birds of Prey gets its R rating as an F bombs, not the ultra violence or taboo that, G uh, that Deadpool and Joker excluded. So let's think about that there, right? So obviously, uh, Suicide Squad had a big draw from women. Women were a big draw for that movie. They really liked the character. Uh, and apparently that has died off in the subsequent couple years. And I do think that because it took this long to bring out a sequel is one of the reasons why uh, they're failing to go. But it also shows you that men are still the predominant consumers of these types of properties. And there has been uh, a lot of people who look at the marketing and think this is a pro-feminist movie, even though people who have seen it will argue that it's not. There was controversies that were surrounding the uh, the initial story leaks uh, with, uh, with, with the nature of Black Mask and his sexual orientation and how that tied into the overall plot that didn't seem like it was being handled very carefully. There were issues with reshoots, but from what I understand, the reshoots were actually made the movie better. And I have no issue with reshoots. They happen all the time. So we can really start to look at here uh, that this movie almost feels like it alienated female audiences by targeting them directly. Now, isn't that just kind of a weird statement to make? And I don't want people to read into that too much. I have nothing against female led films or female directors or anything of the sort. I, I, I completely applaud it. Uh, if it's done well, but I think when it comes to the culture war, especially in comic books, people are tired of identity politics. And if they feel like this is being crammed down their throat, then they may, they just may not show up. However, there is the alternate to that, which of course would be Captain Marvel, whose marketing heavily leaned into the feminist narrative. Uh, and that, while it did cause a backlash online, especially here on YouTube, the movie uh, pulled in $1.1 billion. You know what I mean? Like people went to go see it and they, they went to go see it multiple times. So clearly, I guess maybe if done in the right way, uh, it can it can it can benefit. But there is nothing about that I really saw here. Now, I will say that the marketing was a little bit jumbled. It didn't really kind of uh, wow me at first, but it, it did. The, the, the second trailer uh, sold me on the movie while the first couple didn't. And I do think Warner Brothers has an issue with marketing, and I think that's where it failed them. They tried to be like Deadpool. Everyone's comparing it to Deadpool uh, or Logan, but it clearly isn't as funny as that, and it clearly isn't as hard hitting as Logan. And so I think that's going to be uh, the big problem here. So at the end of the day, 
uh you know we're hearing stuff uh, there's, there's this little bit right here where he says i hear the first cut tested really poorly and that dc film boss walter hamada got birds of prey into shape by being uh the critically praised film that it is and has been widely reported that there were reshoots common for the, a big on-screen event like this however uh what it did throw a monkey wrench into the marketing machine. I understand they, they should not be blamed here. They only had so much to work with. The materials weren't ready for the studio to take down to Comic-Con in July, which is true. Um, despite such stunts as the uh, in-theater trailer drop for It Chapter 2 and taking Robbie and the film down to Brazil Comic-Con in Sao Paulo, the overall campaign lacked the sense of eventizing. Uh, remember uh, when half of Hall H fans were posting the illegally taped trailer of the first Suicide Squad more than a year before its release? Actually, that's true. They did. Someone bootlegged the trailer for Suicide Squad, threw it up on, on YouTube, and the positivity, the positive buzz surrounding that bootleg trailer circulated around the internet so freaking hard that David Ayer and Warner Brothers released it in HD on Monday morning. So yeah, that, that's very true. There was eventizing on that one. Uh, and that's because the marketing didn't have to do a lot of work with the movie like they did with Joker, Meg, etc. Remember all the clever marketing tricks and self-parodies Fox pulled off with Deadpool? That wasn't possible here, which is true. They just, I mean, I don't really know. They, they didn't really give us much in regards to the story. They tried playing up the characters and I, I think a lot of people liked it, uh, but it also kind of failed to connect. Now also it says here, and I kind of agree with this, uh, also, sorry, but the release date here wasn't good. After comic book movies have launched during Valentine's Day, President's Day weekend, why would you avoid the cash grab and not launch Birds of Prey over that time? Moviegoers don't seem to care that Robbie nominated for Best Supporting Actress this weekend at the Oscars for Bombshell and has a movie opening at the same time because people don't care about the Oscars anymore. They just don't care about the Oscars anymore. I'm sorry, they don't. And that they Hollywood needs to get that through their effing heads. Uh, now... Uh, if there was any non-Disney competition next weekend, I'm sure Birds of Prey as a DC Comics movie could have elbowed them out. Warners instead looked at the lead and power of the holiday, seeing how pre-President's Day movies like the Lego movie and the R-rated Fifty Shades Darker and John Wick Chapter 2 opened and played through. However, I would like to point back, though, to 2017's The Lego Batman movie, which opened on the same weekend three years ago. And that one, if I recall, didn't do as well as they wanted it to. And that was technically a DC film. However, I find it funny that this particular article is overlooking that, but whatever the movies, I mean, clearly not doing very well. Uh, and then of course it just kind of goes through all of it, you know, and, and we were looking at this movie, uh, through the lens of, of analysts and, and the box office trends and what, what's coming in. And the, the reality of it is, uh, it's going to be number one, but it's not going to sit there and really uh, and really do exceptionally well. Now, let me give you guys uh, my absolute take as to why this movie um, failed in the way that it did. And a lot of you out there are probably not going to like it or really super agree with me. However, um, it's this Joker. It has everything to do with Joker. Joker changed the game. It did. It fundamentally changed the game. This movie has broken the DCEU. It has because for one, uh, this movie had so much hype, so much, so much controversy surrounding it that it did uh, greater than projections. People were being told if you go to the theater on opening weekend, you might get shot. And so people went to the theater on opening weekend and then they weren't shot. But what they saw was a story of a man going through a mental breakdown in a society that's forgotten him. Uh, it's very, uh, you know, very culturally poignant, very societally poignant. And it's, it's, it has a lot to do with current politics and current times. And people resonated with that. And they talked about the movie and they talked about it and they talked about it. And it just kind of reset the tone. It reset the tone of the DCEU. And I think Birds of Prey coming out so close to that, even though it's been like five months, I still think Birds of Prey is in the shadow of this movie because this movie is up for 11 Oscars this weekend. This movie is the one that people are going to be going to see in theaters if they re-release Joker this weekend. This is the movie people are going to be paying for. Birds of Prey opening up against uh, uh, the Oscars when the Joker is up for, you know, 11 of them uh, is almost a, a conflict of, of of the brands. And I do think that the, that the tone and the way that it was shot and the way that it was made and the resonance that it took with not only comic book fans, but non-comic book fans taking it over to 1.1 billion highest grossing R-rated movie of all time clearly puts it into position to where it does change the structure of the DCEU, even though it's technically considered like an Elseworld and it's not part of the DCEU. The average normal person who watches these movies that is not in on this will think that that is part of it. They will they will associate them together. And if this movie is Birds of Prey is not doing what Joker did, if it's coming in 
and it's bright and it's colorful and it's flamboyant and it's not dark and dreary and trying to say a message of some kind, even though this could be the funnest movie of the year when you've got this one, which is so poignant in so many ways coming up and it's still on the mind of a lot of people. It's still being talked about. Um, you can tell that Warner Brothers made a huge mistake off of this one. And as a result, Birds of Prey uh, is not going to it's going to flop, even though it's going to be number one. Uh, it might it might get strong word of mouth. I think that's going to help it out quite a bit. Um, but uh, I, you know what? This is this is definitely one of those things Warner's dropped the ball on. And I feel bad for the cast and crew who worked hard on the film because I hear it's a lot of fun. I still plan on going to go see it. Um, and that's just where we find ourselves. Right. That's just where we uh, where where we end up really finding ourselves, which is quite unfortunate uh, that it ended up going this way. But that is just the way the crooked combos. Anyway, I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear your opinions. Let me know down in the comments below. I do appreciate them. I will talk to you guys all later. Have yourself a great day. Thank you for watching and peace out. Hey, thank you very much for watching the video. If you want to keep the conversation going, and if you made it this far, you clearly do, come on in and join the Discord. Link is in the video description. Can't wait to see you there. Have yourself a great day, and peace out.